Satan will work on your ego. I will say you, you follow Rashad Khalif. And you know better, and I know better. We do not follow Rashad Khalifa. We do not follow Muhammad or Jesus. We do not follow any human being. We follow God. We know that. That's why we smile when they say that. But this is just about one of the last straw. Uh, you follow Rashad Khalifa is the polite way. But usually say you follow the crazy Rashad Khalifa. You have to add some adjectives just to work even harder on our egos. But we make it very clear, we follow Malik al mulk the possessor of all kingship. We follow only God, we follow only the word of God. And uh, as you know, I'm the first one to tell you, if it is, if it is my opinion, if it is Rashad Khalifa, don't follow him. Because you'll probably do the wrong thing. If it is, you must, you must be sure you're following God and you're following the word of God. And we will go to any extent to make sure that we are following God and the word of God. We're not following the words of any human being. Two more not Okay. We praise God and we bear witness that there is no God except the one God. At this rate, it seems like I will finish the Friday sermon and finish the Friday prayer before Ismail Barakat is here. Because at 2 o'clock, we have the introductions and the welcome. God says, only the intelligent come to me. And when we look at the Quran, almost every page says, the only unforgivable offense, if maintained until death, is idol worship. There's only one forgive, unforgivable offense at the time of death. When a person dies and he had committed murders and lies and cheats and theft and adultery and aggression, all these are forgivable. God gave, a, gave us examples in the Quran. Moses killed somebody, one of God's great prophets. There's only one unforgivable offense at the time of death, and that is idol worship, idolatry. Any person with, with the smallest amount of intelligence will say to himself or herself, if this is the only unforgivable offense, I'm going to avoid any suspicion of it for the rest of my life, all my life. Any hint of idol worship, I'm going to get rid of it. We look at the Quran and it says in Surah 3 verse 18, that God, and God begins with himself, Shahid Allah, God bears witness. Anahu la ilaha illahu, that uh, la ilaha illallah. This is the shahada according to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. According to God, the shahada is la ilaha illallah. Wal malaikatu and the angels, God blessed the angels after him. Wa ulul ilm, and also possess knowledge. So there is the shahada in plain language. In any language, in any translation, God bears witness that the shahada is La ilaha illallah. And so do the angels and also possess knowledge. Therefore, if I say La ilaha illallah, I am right. So they tell you, okay, put next to it Muhammad Rasulullah. Where, where does this come from? Maybe it is perfectly all right. Maybe. But maybe is a maybe. Maybe it's idol worship. Maybe it's perfect, but we're not sure. And any intelligent person who knows that the only unforgivable offense is idol worship will say, since La ilaha illallah is correct, and La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah is maybe, I'm going to stick with La ilaha illallah. After all, these are the words that came out of Muhammad's mouth. He will, certainly he will not blame me for saying La ilaha illallah in the day of Zatim. I'm talking about God will not blame me. And this is consistent through, through the Quran. 
In Surah Muhammad, Surah entitled Muhammad number 47, verse 19, says, فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ You shall know that لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ the Muhammad has took it and they put فَعْلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Muhammad Rasulullah. They added it. I mean, you'll see it here in this, in the appendix. He said, no, that لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ There's no God except Allah. Muhammad is Rasulullah, his messenger. They added it. And they put it in the calligraphy that looks like the Quran to the point that people who memorized the Quran were fooled. They thought it was Quran. Because this kind of idolatry became so common that it became part and parcel of the people's uh, beliefs. God says in the Surah entitled Muhammad Fa'alam and now they are in Allah. So why are they trying to push their idolatry on us? It doesn't make sense. Any intelligent person knowing that idol worship is the only unforgivable, unforgivable offense. Will will uh, will run away from any suspicion of idol. So then they turn against the only one. They say, why don't you believe that Muhammad is Rasulullah? <laughs> well, the fact that you uphold the Quran is the biggest proclamation that we know that Muhammad is Rasulullah. It's God's message, and we we have examples that uh, utterly destroy their arguments. The Quran is the word of God, and, and consistently God puts his scriptures ahead of the messengers, the prophets, the Quran. God is the believers and those who believe in, in, in God, God is answers his scriptures and his messengers. The scriptures, the word of God comes ahead of the messengers always in the Quran, the sequel. So you can ask them, don't you believe, do you believe that the Quran is the word of God? You say yes. Tell them, okay, and you should say, La ilaha illallah, the Quran, Kalam Allah. Why don't you say, don't you believe the Quran is Kalam Allah, the word of God? Why don't you say, La ilaha illallah, the Quran is the word of God? See, it's the same. This completely shuts them up. They accuse you of being uh, hating Muhammad, which is the exact opposite. They hate Muhammad. And the Quran says that only the, the hypocrites say Muhammad Rasulullah. They add it to that. You put God, Muhammad's name next to God's name. You can take this to a further and say, uh, why not say the Allah, the sun rises from the east. You know, there's no end to this. Why don't you believe the sun rises from the east? So there are millions of statements that we can put next to the Allah, the Allah that are absolutely correct. But this is not the point. Verse 18 of Surah 3 says, God bears witness that La ilaha illa hu. I lost my note. When they tell you you follow Rashad Khalifa, if they're polite, with the crazy Rashad Khalifa, if they're normal, <laughs> you tell them you follow God, you follow God alone. You follow the word of God alone. The principle is very easy. If it is not in the Quran, we don't we have no consideration for it. In this conference you're going to hear lots of views, personal views of many people. Anybody can say anything they want. But your criterion is the Quran. If it is not in the Quran, don't believe it. No matter who is talking to you. It's a very simple principle. But this is what we follow. Even in this conference, Satan has to be represented, especially in this conference. Satan has to be represented and you're going to hear some views and that are contrary to the Quran. And if you believe them, you deserve to believe. There may be two or three people who will, who will be influenced. Because the purpose of these people who are bringing views other than the Quranic views is to at least put doubt in your heart. 
And if you, as long as you have doubt in your heart, you're in the lowest rank of, of submission. You remember the verse in Surah 49, verse 11, I believe. It says, Khalif uh, al-Arabu Amanna, they said, we are believers. And God says, do not say you're believers, say you are uh, Muslims. Until all doubt is gone. So their job is to put even a little bit of doubt in your heart. And when this happens, you know that God is testing you and that, unfortunately, if, if the doubt comes in my heart, because unfortunately I'm, I still have some doubts. So I'm still in the lowest track. I'm still on my way. It's not hopeless yet. <coughs> but you must be aware of this principle. This is our principle. If it is not in the Quran, I don't believe. It may or may not be correct. But if it is not in the Quran, I'm not following it. We have time now to do the Friday prayer and then we will go into I can't think of any longer <laughs> until it's made it here. So we'll just go through with the Friday prayer. And uh, I'm sure it's made. We get this chance to express his views. He had, he had prepared a very good photograph on the ink and paper. But uh, this, this, is, this is not the Quran. The ink and paper, the physical book, is not the Quran. The Quran is in your heart. When the Prophet Muhammad was taken to the seventh heaven to receive the Quran, God does not give him a book. It's made here? No. 